This classic episode of the Electric Playground is brought to you by PNP Games, your source for everything video games. Support the partners that support Electric Playground. Remember, this episode first aired in 1999. water and you like boats then you're gonna love hydro thunder and the game's been out in the arcades for a little while how's it been doing it's been doing great we've been seeing a great audience loving the game you know midway's known for their great racing games and once again we come out with some you know some pretty good racing games from regular street racing all the way to water how many players can play in the arcade at the same time four players can play at one time and then on the home systems what are you going to be doing same kind of thing well for the dreamcast system we're going to be using a two-player split mode okay, okay? it's going to be a horizontal line going across i'm a huge fan of these wave racing type games is this the best one ever Definitely. One thing about Hydro that uh, separates the, uh, this game from any other uh, water-based game is the Newtonian physics of uh, Hydro. What was that? The big, that was a big word. The Newtonian physics. Our, uh, Newtonian. Phil, spell that word. N-E-W-T-O-N-I-A-N. -N. Oh, like Newton. Yes. Sir Isaac Newton. Yes. Our, uh, I, I saw him on Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, really? Did yeah. you now? Well, our uh, head programmer, Steve Rank, basically did the uh, physics from scratch and basically used the physics from scratch. We we had a big team doing this, and as you can see with the uh, physics, the game looks beautiful, and the game just plays wonderful. So tell me some of the levels in this game. What are some of the worlds that you're going to be shooting through? Uh, one of the worlds is going to be like Nile River. It's one of our biggest tracks. It's like an Egyptian kind of theme where you're going through caverns, seeing different uh, mummy caves and stuff like that. We have Lost Island, kind of like a Jurassic Park kind of style of a track. We have the Arctic Circle with a lot of uh, wildlife, uh, polar bears, penguins, and stuff. A lot of interaction in the tracks. And how about secrets and little extras? Is there like a Midway jet boat or something? Oh, we'll have a lot of secrets as always. Midway's known for that. We're going to have secret, secret tracks, secret uh, features and stuff, but I'll leave that to the... Uh, the gamers? Yes, definitely. A lot of shortcuts in the game as well. Cool. So you guys are... You're able to pump out the home version of these games so quickly now. How are you guys able to do this? Well, basically, sometimes we get the code of the game before the game's finished in the coin-op, and we port it over to our developers, so that basically we try to get the game out there to our consumers as quick as possible, especially for Hydro Thunder being such an anticipated game. What's your favorite thing about E3? The favorite thing? I guess the uh, all the girls, I guess. <laughs> but you guys have all the girls. That's true. Well, as you can see, our crowd, I think we did the right thing. One of the coolest top-down perspectives games of all time was Grand Theft Auto. Well, get ready for Grand Theft Auto 2. Grand Theft Auto 2. Grand Theft Auto, the first one, was one of my favorite games. What can we expect in this one? In the first one, we suggested there were gangs. You answer a phone, someone's telling you something to do. Right. In this one, the gangs control the city, they control the industry in the city, and they dominate areas of the city. You go to an area, you've got to earn respect from the gangs. Respect is the key word. When they start to give you work, another gang ain't going to be too pleased. They're going to start to hate you, and they're going to start tracking you down and trying to destroy you. Really? Cool. Yeah. Now, is it set up the same way? You kind of start on the bottom and work your way up the mob chain? You've got to earn respect to get any jobs at all. Eventually, they'll send a few guys off with you to work. And they'll all jump in with you and go and protect you when you go and meet some of your less friendly members of your city. The amazing thing that I liked was the, the amazing car physics, the way you really felt the like... Are, the physics are about 10 times better than this one. Really? You can do full 180s, 360s, every trick in the book, but of course the police know them all. Everyone's got AI this time. Right. Not just the police, the pedestrians have got AI, they're all trying to do something. Is there going to be any play over the internet kind of thing? Multiplayer, as in the first one, deathmatch style. Step me through one of the missions. There's a redneck gang. Okay. If they're playing the country and western music, you don't like it too much. Arm your car with a bomb, drive to the radio station building, drop it outside, pick up the getaway car waiting for you, 
get driven off, you're listening to country and western song, boom, boom, suddenly your radio goes flat. Are there going to be the same kind of cars in it? The 20 minutes into the future is the kind of time period we're looking at. Okay. Concept cars, old cars, all new cars, all oh, new okay. tiles, oh, no. everything brand new, right. everything improved. Cool. Everything built again from the base up. Oh, I can't wait to play this game. Excellent, I hope cool. you enjoy it. I think right. you will. You and the rest of the world right now are watching Doom on the Electric Playground. Lee from PMP Games here with my latest purchase, a brand new Sega Saturn control pad. Uh, Buddy destroyed one in a heated Guardian Hero session last weekend. A small price to pay for a night of video games with friends. I don't know if you've been paying attention to this internet thing or not, but our days of playing multiplayer games in the same room as one another might be numbered. If only out of convenience. At Past and Present Games, it's our mission to keep the experience of video gaming tangible, as long as possible. Visit our retail locations in Winnipeg or browse our entire inventory online at pmpgamesonline.com. You'll find a myriad of software, merch, and accessories from all generations of video gaming. And enjoy free shipping on orders of $65 Canadian or more within Canada and the USA. Now, back to the show! Every year in Chicago, Wizard Magazine puts on one of the biggest comic book conventions in the world. Ooh! Of course, we had to go check it out. Is this a show about video games? So I'm here with uh, Mr. Garib Seamus. He's the uh, the big guy, the big cheese, the head honcho, big pickle. You're the man. Not the big pickle, but I'm the man at the <laughs> yeah. show here. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having us out here. How have you guys been able to build a show this size? Um, it's really a lot of hard work, a lot of organization, and basically inviting all my friends that are the big artists and big writers to the convention yeah. for all the fans to see. Do you guys play video games? Oh yeah, play lots. Actually, we used to play video games with, did, yeah. against each other pretty yeah. furiously. We used to play white bite all the time for hours. Are there any plans to make Mystery Man into a video game? Well, actually, we're going to do a puppet show <laughs> and uh, tour the country with that. I'm here with Garth Ennis, and uh, that's all I know. Right. <laughs> we did that again, sorry. It's almost like learning a secret language. You start to be able to decode fanboy symbols on t-shirts. <laughs> I'm here with Marat Michaels, the artist and co-writer of the Nash comic book. And then also getting a lot of big stars like uh, Ray Park, who played uh, Darth Maul in the Star Wars movie. It wasn't my voice, but I pretty much knew they were going to change it because I don't think my voice is scary enough for it. You're a big video game fan. Uh, yeah, there's a time in my life where I played a lot more than I do now, but yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm really looking forward to the Superman game, the, the, the Super Nintendo Did game. you play it? You know, I tried in the mall, and I'm just frustrated. Nobody makes scrolling games anymore. Everything is that 3D nonsense. Who are some of your favorites out there? I'm a very big fan of the Marvel Knights stuff. I love it. I'm a big Frank Miller fan. Anything that McFarlane's working on, I like to look at. I'm a big fan of Tom Cow. Of course, there's a lot of stuff uh, from DC, like JLA and Preacher and stuff that I like. Right on. Um, I do like the cliffhanger stuff. I mean, there's just so much stuff. I, I go on. You like everything. Basically, yeah. yeah. Now, have you ever done anything in the, the, on the video game side of things? Uh, we developed the content, but not the games. And so, obviously, like Wildcats, that was made into a Super Nintendo game. There's a Danger Girl game that's being developed by InSpace. I think uh, THQ is a publisher. You're featured quite often in these wrestling games. Have you checked that out? I check out the royalty checks every quarter. <laughs> Keep buying those games, kids. The new generations are all multimedia. You know, all the kids are growing up with not just one thing, not just paper, not just television, not just films, but now you have this whole world of interactivity. So you want to be part of that. You want Fathom to be all over because, yeah, they'll get the comic book, but they'll also get the video game. They'll get the online information. They'll see the movie. Do you want to see your projects become films? Uh, you know, you always worry about that a little bit because you lose a lot of creative control, but I don't think anybody would say no to one of those checks. So. <laughs> I was a Marvel fan, Captain America, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Daredevil. Did, did that ever influence you to want to be a wrestler? No, actually I took a number two pencil and stuck it in one ear and it came out the other and I knew I could be a wrestler. <laughs> comic books are still one of the best mediums to develop characters, and yeah. then especially in the comic book format, it's very easy to get your story across in a very visual way that right. people can understand and see. There's a lot of crossover between comics and, and video games, especially on the um, character creation standpoint. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's not something that I, I really know a great deal about. Um, the last video game I played was Pac-Man in a bar. And so, um, really, I, I, I don't have a great deal of knowledge about it. Um, the, the kind of stuff I do, Preacher in particular, probably doesn't lend itself to that, that kind of crossover so well. 
Um, although that would be one hell of a computer game. One of the biggest sleeper hits of last year was Spyro the Dragon. Well, get ready for another sequel, because we got Spyro 2. I'm here with the President and Vice President of Insomniac Games, and we're talking about Spyro 2? Spyro 2. Now you guys both worked on Spyro the original? Yeah, we've been together about five years now, and we both worked on Spyro 1. We are here in Las Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel to celebrate the release of Spyro the Dragon. So what are the scavenger hunt rules? Basically, we've got until 5 o'clock today to uh, find 20 different scavenger hunt items. We're going to be all over the place. Where's the largest uh, slot machine? I don't know where we are. Tommy, where are we, man? We're on the electric playground. Hi. How did you guys come up with the, the concept? One of our artists, Craig Stitt, said one day, you know, I've always wanted to do a game about a dragon. And immediately, Everybody said, yeah. Well, so what's new? I'd say the biggest change is the structure of the game. Spyro 2 is more of a game of completion. We have primary and secondary objectives in every level. We have uh, mini games that the hardcore gamers can really sink their teeth into, uh, whereas with the primary objectives, the novice players can feel comfortable and not too intimidated. Do you think this is sad, carrying Spyro through Las Vegas? Are we getting your Mardi Gras thing? Right, no, here you go, here you go. OK, Tommy, now just jump like that guy. Does that hurt? Yeah. I hear that Spyro has a lot of new moves. He can now swim, he can climb, he can spit projectiles, he has now a new hover. He can what? <laughs> he can spit. He can pick up things and spit them at the enemies. For the bonus thing, do you want to pick a lamb? What if there's like a petting zoo? There's a petting zoo down there. It's tough work. Too much to see. What is now one of the flashiest and largest casino resorts in Las Vegas? about the storyline. What have you guys done for, with Spyro 2? What's the new story? Uh, after Spyro defeated Nasty Nork in first Spyro, he came back to the dragon world pretty tired. You know, he figured uh, he needed a break. So the rest of the dragons said, hey, Spyro, why don't you go on vacation? Something goes wrong, and he ends up in a new universe called Avalar. There are a couple of very big bad guys that you encounter along the way. Like, like what? The way. There's one guy called Ripto, who is a really big bad guy. And he's constantly giving all the inhabitants of Avalar a hard time, kicking them out of their castles. He's lost. We're very lost. But we can find an Indian. You said you know an Indian one. All right. You can deal with this kind of travel. OK, this one should be quick. OK, I'll go on with the camera. 10 minutes. We got four shots. All the inhabitants want Spyro to uh, figure out how to beat Ripto. But Spyro's got to chase him through a bunch of different worlds. Oh, there are 29 different levels in Spyro. So he's 29, got wow. Well, he's got a lot of exploring to do. Can you give me your best Spyro impression? Okay, somebody's off in the elevator, and I'll take a picture. Okay, go ahead, it's open. Let's go. It's open and empty. We will win. What games influenced your your design? Well, we definitely have to say Mario 64 was a big influence. What do you think of Shigeru Miyamoto? It's tough to look at any video game without seeing his influence. He won all the awards at the Interactive Academy the other night. It was amazing. Hey, what's your favorite video game of all time? No way, that's mine too! Celebrate video games along with myself and Victor Lucas every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube.com slash EPNTV. Brought to you in part proudly by PMP Games. Play forever! Now this is one slick cat. We're talking about Shigeru Miyamoto. Now this is one fat daddy who's been living large with the likes of Mario and Zelda and a whole other slew of Nintendo games. And we got the exclusive. First of all, I want to thank you, Mr. Miyamoto, for, for giving us this time. And also, on behalf of all the game players of the world, I want to thank you for all the games you've given us and all the fun you've given us over the years. How many video game titles have you worked on? <laughs> Actually, I have just counted them all, and uh, we, I, I made 64 games by now, including the games which I worked as a producer. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, super question. <laughs> 46. Uh, 46 now. 46. Do you have children of your own? Yeah. I know. Do you have Yes, I have two children. One is a 13 years old boy and 11 years old girl. 
Do they like video games? Hmm. Well, I guess it's just so so. They just clear Legend of Zelda. What was your inspiration for the character of Mario? I like to make something uh, within certain limitations. So when we, I was making Mario character, there were certain restrictions on the dog. In spite of that, I wanted to make something unique. I think because of such restrictions in the video game, uh, I could come up with an uh, image of Mario. Where did you draw your inspirations for the world of Zelda? Well, when it comes to the world, I think it has something to do with my childhood. There are places I loved to play and such and such. That kind of images, I believe, have been reflected in the world of Legend of Zelda. And when it comes to the character Link, I believe uh, everybody has some ages when they want to be strong. I think that kind of images are uh, to be reflected upon the character of Link. Are you a fun guy to work with? Or do um, you take work very seriously? Maybe I'm too serious guy, and uh, some other people just uh, find it hard to work with me. <laughs> do you still ride your bike to work? <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah? Yes. Keeps you healthy. So the and swimming too. And swimming? Good. Good. You look very young. You don't swim to work. Only when only in the typhoon. What does Nintendo mean to you? I joined Nintendo because I couldn't understand what they are making. They were making anything. So, I thought that I would be given the opportunity to make anything as, a, as I liked, so that the company can be a kind of sponsor for me. Who do you admire out there? It may sound strange, but I don't have so much people to, that I'm respecting. For example, uh, when it comes to Spielberg, I feel he's wonderful. He's a wonderful movie maker. And I find uh, Lucas is another wonderful person who has been not hesitant to uh, support the young, talented people. Well, uh, only the person I can think about now is uh, when I joined the company, he was there and uh, working with me. Un unfortunately, he is no more in this world, but Mr. Yokoi is the person I can say I, I am respectful. Thank you very much. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you. I had tears in my eyes when I was playing this game because I honestly felt like the video game industry took a huge step backwards. You said I, that. I almost Tell cried. us why. Over here! Oh, dude, I just had that dream again with those two. Wipeout 3. Let me just say this about Wipeout 3. You know, 20 minutes of playing the game, it's like, okay, it's Wipeout. I disagree. New tracks, bunch of new weapons. I love the force wall. You can shoot out an energy wall that the uh, other, other players can ram into and you stop them dead in their tracks. That's really cool. You've got two-player split screen and you've got analog control. And I've been waiting for analog control and Wipeout on a PlayStation for years. So I was very happy with this game. The menu screens in this game yeah. are by far the ugliest menu screens you have ever seen in your entire life hey. of playing video games. 
The, if you it, like gray and black, though. The other problem I have is that yeah. when you get in first place, Vic wouldn't know about it. Yeah. But when you're in first place, I you, you, first you just place. get beamed I'm constantly. In first place. You're never in first place. I love it. They took it outside a little bit more. This one's not as dark and gloomy or dreary. There's not rain spattering as much. It's a happier future. Right. In this in this wipeout, the vehicles are completely redesigned. There's all kinds of new shapes. Yeah, they all styles. look like triangles. No, there's there's squares. <laughs> oh, there's some squares. There's in some there square. Oh, I, I just saw the, in there. the triangle. You know what? It's definitely time to see this thing in a new, uh, a new system. You know, we want to see super clean, ultra high res graphics in here. Two. I can't wait for a PlayStation 2 version of the game. Uh, I'm a huge Wipeout fan. This was exactly what I was hoping I would get out of Wipeout. It's not much more though. Given a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yes. I'm a huge Wipeout fan. Wow. I buy it in a second. All right, I, I give it a seven even, 7.0. It's, it's Wipeout, and after a half hour, you know, it's like, okay, what's next? I'll tell you what's next. What's next? Lego Racers. It's Legos Racing. Well, yeah, it's another, which is funny, because it's, it's, it has a similar kind of gameplay to Wipeout. It's another race around, yeah, exactly. and, and you blow up your buddies, and there's all kinds of power-ups and weapons and stuff. I mean, the cool thing is, if you're you know fan of Legos... And you're a goof if you're not. Who isn't? You can actually create your cars, and by putting the blocks on, and you you have your chassis you can choose so from, cool. and little hats on Oh, the yeah, you can totally yeah, customize your, your, your character and your car. I totally use the Diddy Kong racing style. You pick up three of the same Lego pieces and then you, you powered up your power up and you get more use out of it. So right. you can have bigger guns and more turbo boosts. The levels are cool. You, cool got, you got space level and the pirate castle level and the pirate. Theme. You gotta have a, a 3D accelerator car. That's right. That's right. It looks fabulous. It really looks cool. It looks great. And it's if you're a big Lego fan, you're gonna have a blast making all kinds of different combinations. If you if you stack all your all your Lego pieces on one side of the car, it'll tilt over to that side of the car right. every time you're making a corner. It's, it's a, a decent game. 7.5. I, I would give it an eight. I'd definitely okay. check it out. I'd pick it up for your piece. Now, it's speaking really cool. of this game, though, we should also talk about Revolt. Oh, Revolt. But like I said, Revolt. Re Re Revolt. Revolt. Tell them what it is. It's it's like a, it's an RC little racing. RC cars. Yeah, you got these little wicked little toy cars. There's You're all kinds around. of varieties. There's tons of different modes besides racing. Network play is, it's a multiplayer is, the, is the, best, the best way to play this game. The levels are amazing. You got toy stores, grocery markets. You're at the toys perspective. So you get to go around all these huge things. So you're like in the neighborhood, the toys in the hood level. I love that. Jumping over uh, curbs and then over in the distance, you can see sprinklers and basketballs will bounce in your way. Before we go any further, Revolt. Revolt, Revolt is a great Revolt. freaking Revolt. game on the PC, it's excellent but it's absolute trash on the N64, on the N64 and the PlayStation. They're both, they're both are lame. And I'll tell you the biggest thing is the graphics are horrible. I, I hated them both on the yeah. consoles. I hated them both equally as well. Exactly. If you have a PC, just the get the PC, PC version. Well, Don't here, even bother with here's the Here's another example of these uh, publishers trying to cash in. It should have just been made for the perfection PC. for right. one system. Exactly. On the PlayStation, I give it a 5.5. I give the PlayStation version a 5. On the N64, it's a little easier to control. I give it a 5.8. I give it a 5 on the N64 as well. Yeah, textures are so muddy and foggy, I couldn't tell where I was going. But on the PC, I give it an 8.7. I give it a 9 on the PC. Yeah, it's a great killer game. game. On PC. Definitely check it out for the PC. We have Blue Stinger for the Dreamcast. Uh, your favorite Dreamcast game so far. Oh, uh, can, I, can I say something? Dialogue is awful. Well, the storyline is awful. No Even pavement. the character's name. Can I talk? Elliot Ballad. I'm I, not done yet. Can I talk? Elliot Ballad, a lead character for a name? Can this I is finish? an awful character name. Go ahead. There's no pace to it at all. The you presentation's spend, terrible. You spend the first 20 minutes not doing anything. Oh. You walk down a hallway and there's just like nothing to do. Okay. You, you go find a key card, you open a door. And there's no excuse now because what do we have? We've had Resident Evil, we've had Metal Gear Solid, we've had exactly. Tomb Raider. We've Elliot Ballad is a character name? Out. You have to get Out. you have to get indoors. Okay? You have to get these access cards to get through doors. Elliot. Well, Guess what? Just look at the dead body right next to all the doors because more than likely, 90% of the time, they're the ones with the cards. So you pick up the card, you go in, you see these beasts that are just lying and, dead and, on and the ground. And they look cool. The monsters and stuff, they look cool. They suck. They okay. look cool. No, they're, 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 they look cool. Seven arms coming out of them. Oh, they're crap. They look cool. You kill the guys, you check it out. Tokens fly off them like in Sonic and you have to yeah. go collect the tokens. With the sound. 
And, and it even has the same sound. I, uh, the, the biggest disappointment with this game is that there really isn't any inter any anything to interact with. I knew I was in trouble playing this game when you cross this bridge, it, it pulls back, shows you the cinematic, and then all of a sudden this dogs guy is like, oh, I'm going to follow you around for the rest of the game and be your, your buddy and protect you because you're a wimp, okay? And then the cinematic pulls away, and guess what? Dogs disappears. Like, I mean, it's, it's annoying. You pull the camera back and all of a sudden you see the character on a scale to 1 to 10. I give this game my lowest score ever of all time on the electric oh. playground. I give it a 1.3. I'd give Blue Stinger a 4. I think it, it deserves right. a 4. All right, let's go, man. I want to get on this thing. Let's get out of here. Can't, we can't talk about Blue Stinger some more? No, we're done. Oh. Come on, let's go. Let's go do our dog's impression. Woo! Blue Stinger blows! Hey, look, everyone. I'm on TV. Get it? I'm on TV. Rough crowd. It's a little hot in here, isn't it? Ooh. Production assistance for Electric Playground is provided by Sony Computer Entertainment, publishers of Jet Moto 3 for the PlayStation. Activision, publishers of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Now everyone thinks they can skate like Tony Hawk. And Computech Media, publishers of Insight Video Gaming, Insight PC Gaming, and InsightGames.com. Pick up the new issues of the magazines. They're out on newsstands now. This classic episode of The Electric Playground was brought to you by PNP Games, your source for everything video games. Support the partners that support The Electric Playground. Thanks for watching and play forever. <laughs>